Hello everyone, it is Susan here from Susan Hiles Art, and welcome to my channel. So today we are going to start working on another three and a half by three and a half inch block. And I definitely wanna stick with like a purple theme. And I don't use purple a lot, but yeah, I just feel like that would be like a fun thing, a fun color to work on next. Um, the first thing I wanna do, I just wanna look through this little stack here and I do need to um, cut another three and a half by three and a half block, uh, meaning the fabric underneath. So I need another block, another, another base for my, for my next square. So I think I'll go ahead and use this, which is a linen, linen napkin. And I guess I'll just go ahead and tear it. The only thing with um, tearing a napkin like this, even though, I don't know, it tends to like stretch a little bit, but that's all right. That's all right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do this. So I have three and a half and we'll just go ahead and tear. And then let's see, I might as well cut a few of them, right? Since I have this long piece. Um, so let's do three and a half again. Easy peasy, right? Easy peasy. And then this will give us some good blocks or some bases to, to work on. It looks like I'm, I don't know that I can get three out of this, but we can certainly get two. So let's see, maybe three, maybe just, yeah. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Do you see that? <laughs> it's exactly, well, it's basically exactly three and a half, maybe a tad, a tad, a tad bigger, but that's okay. All right. So we have those. Um, let me see. Let me, will my iron reach over here? Let me just turn this on for a second so I can iron these. Now, the last time that we worked on uh, this block right here, uh, that's when I thought, well, maybe I would do something with purple because of this piece of fabric right here. And it has like two different, very different shades of purple on it. And that's the one thing about purple that kind of makes me hesitate to use purple. And that's the fact that purples can be so different, right? There's so many different kinds and shades of purple. Um, so you either want to be very matchy-matchy or not care about it at all. And don't be matchy and just do what you want. Um, then the other thing was, so like if I used a piece of this fabric on here... Like, I would love to use this big flower, but then it's covering up the purple. So, you know, could I put that a little bit lower on there? I could. I could do something like that to where if this would end, like, right here. So maybe something like that. Maybe that's what I'll kind of think about. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and give a quick little iron to these just makes it a little bit easier to work with okay done done let me put this away and all right so I don't have a lot of purple scraps um, but you know what I think I'm gonna do I think the very first thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and tear this. So now I have a smaller scrap. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So if that went there, let's just say, 
We're just saying. Um, I honestly don't think I have any other purple in this bin or this. Uh, well, here's a little piece. Oh, look at that. I found a little purple. Um, oh, I guess I do. Look at this. All right. All right. Oh, I kind of like this. It's not purple, but it is a stamped feather on a piece of fabric. I kind of like that. Maybe we'll make one next that's more neutral tones. I'm gonna hold that out. Um, I have this, this is cool. This is very cool. All right, I think I'm gonna have to iron again. Um, oh, so you know what? I'm kind of liking this. Now they doesn't have to be, you know, all purple purple. Um, I'm just gonna pull this out and let's see. Oh, there's a little piece of eyelash trim. What else? Oh, a little piece of purple lace. Oh, I'm so glad I'm finding all of this. Because I almost didn't look in this again. Because I could swear I looked through this. Oh, well. Oh, well. You see, there's not a lot of purple. There's very little. I see something purple down here. More eyelash trim. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking that might be it, which is good, which is more than enough. So let me put that away. And so now I have all this stuff. Um, I'm just going to put this over here, something to think about, or I can use this when I do my neutral piece next time and this fell off of that little tray so that could be part of the neutral block I do at some point so let's kind of play around with this stuff and again just kind of keeping in mind this huge flower so for the most part I don't even care about the middle of this right it doesn't really doesn't really matter. I had this piece that I was hoping to use. And this was from the uh, coaster that I made. So I could even do something like that. Now, I don't mind having a little bit, you know, go a little bit over the edge. I don't mind. Either way works. I don't know. We're just kind of playing around here. I don't know that that white will stay there. Um, like maybe I'll do another one at some point that's very white. Well, let me kind of keep that thought, right? So I can start making a little pile of white stuff. So that's very much how my head works when I, and I, I always has, I mean, for years and years, like, in my craft area, no matter what craft I'm doing, I think about, I don't know, like things that are like pleasing to my eye. And so then therefore I end up with stacks of stuff um, that I know I can, that, that's a good starter, right, for my next project. So like having this color is a good starter for another block and having white as well is a good starter. Uh, so like as I find things, I'll just add to these little piles. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I'm thinking. And then this, oh that, I like that. I like that. And then if we had don't know that I need the eyelash trim on this. I don't know. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know that I'm feeling the eyelash trim. But I definitely love this. Oh, I love this so much. It's so raggedy and... Look, it's like all torn and fraying, and then there's these pieces coming off the bottom. 
So let's just kind of play with this for a second. So let's just kind of see. So if this were ironed, it would actually fit across the whole piece. So I could even go that route, but I think that that's too much with this flower. So maybe this is another block at a future time, those two things. And like I could easily pull in some black with this and do like a black and purple piece. That would be fun. So, so now I have this. So if I kept this like this, and I could even do another little like ruffle like I did on this. I really like it. I like doing the kind of like fake ruffles. I think it looks pretty. Um, let me just tear this little piece off. Well, let me keep this over here for now. I could even do another ruffle. So let me see. So if I put this down here, see, I don't want to cover this this up right here because that's kind of like the start of my whole the whole thing um, so if I did it's like a puzzle right it's like a puzzle and then this was would still be over here And then if this were ruffled up over here. I like that. I like that. All right, let me pin this down. So if this was here, I just want to make sure it's in the right spot. Um, and, you know, as much as I don't mind if a piece is going to go over the edge, if it's not purposely going over the edge, if possible, I definitely want to see the fraying from the block underneath. Um, so if I put that basically right there, that's a good spot for that. And I mean, think about it. Using up, this is all from that little bin of scraps. <laughs> Very cool, if you ask me. Isn't that funny? Even with paper, I get excited about using scraps. All right. Okay. So this goes here. Right? And then this. See how this stretches? It kind of gets wonky, this linen napkin. All right. So I'm going to pin this down. Oh, and I wanted to talk to you all about cooking, about, you know, cooking and or baking from scratch. Um, I want to show you what I pulled out. Um, you can hear planes. I live near, well, I don't live that far even from Newark, New Jersey airport, which of course is a major airport. Um, that's about 20 minutes away driving. Um, but closer by, literally quarter mile as the crow flies, as they say, that away, there's a small airport, the Morristown Airport. And yeah, so they have fairly, even though it's a small airport, they have, you know, decent sized planes. They don't have like 757s and all that going there, but they do have, you know, fancier jets and stuff going in and out of there. But anyway, so that's what you just heard. I mean, I have my windows wide open. I'm sitting, I have a window in front of me and one on the side of me and they're both open. So you're going to hear the birds, you're going to hear cars, you're going to hear <laughs> planes, you're going to hear it all. Um, all right. And then this is going to go up here. So I'm just going to kind of just pin that. But when I ruffle it, I'll just unpin it and do my regular little faux ruffle um 
that I like to do. So I'm just gonna kind of do that for now to just hold it there. And, yep, so then if that's like that, that can go there and I think that that looks pretty. Now I do think looking at this, that having this purple piece, the lace come out a little bit more, I think that would be a good idea. Let's see, did I, can I do it? Ah, nope. This is, this pin was holding it down, so let's see. And this will go just a little bit off the edge, which I think will look pretty. And it's not even the whole length of the, it's not three and a half inches long. So it's not even the whole length, but that's okay. So now, yeah, see, I think that that looks pretty. What do you guys think? Do you like that? Oop, I just lost the slipper. How did I lose a slipper sitting here? <laughs> All right, I'm liking this. I am, I am. And so it's not, so what I like about it is the purple itself isn't super bold. Like this purple to me is like really, 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 really purple. Where the purples on here are almost not not lilac, but you know, they're they're fairly tame. Um so I like that because then like with these it's um they're they're kind of toned down colors. They're not super bright. I like the fact that these have black on them, but I don't think this one has to have black on it. I really do like black on things, but I don't think that black would look good on that. So I'm not gonna worry about black on this piece. And I am like super excited to to use this, I'm just kind of feeling it. It's kind of hard. Um, so I'm just kind of feeling it to make sure I can put a pin, a needle through it. And I can, there's a couple spots. There's one here and like one here that I can sew through. And that, that's plenty to, to sew this on. All right, so before we pick out our thread, so we'll go through this together. I just wanna share something with you real quick. So like this past week, I kind of been into, you know, now that like work is basically done and my garden is growing, I've been harvesting my lettuce. So I've been eating lettuce pretty much every day and not pretty much, I have been eating it every day, sometimes multiple times a day. And I've used parsley, in, um, I had made lasagna uh, last week, and uh, so I used my parsley. So today I'm gonna cut some parsley, I'm gonna cut some dill, and I'm gonna dry them, which I do, like I wash it, I let them dry really good for like hours, they have to be totally dry, and then I put them on a microwave safe plate, plate uh, single single layer and you nuke it for like a minute or two and it dries it out. I did that with my basil last year and it worked perfectly. So um, it's a good solution for me because it's quick and um, then I can just put it away and I'm done with it. So, but I do want to um, harvest some dill. I'm going to harvest a lot of dill because it's ready, but I think I'm going to leave like little patches there because when dill, um, um, once it starts, you know, um, flowering and, and then it dries and the seeds fall, it will self sow. So I'm, I kind of want to do that. I think, yeah. So I'm going to think about that because it happens to be in a container that has lettuce and peas in it. So I kind of want to control what's in there as well. So I don't know. I'm going back and forth. But I made lasagna 
last week, like I said, and I haven't made lasagna in, I'm gonna say years. And, but my mother had taught me how she made lasagna back when I was a young teenager. And um, just the fact of not working, although yes, they texted me a couple times <laughs> last week, um, but that's all right, that's all right. But anyways, um, but like it's not part of my daily routine anymore. So it literally, it frees me up to think about my garden and to think about cooking and eating better and not ordering out and that kind of stuff, right? And um, so I made lasagna, which was really good. I made a big tray of it. And I have a piece, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, five by five, six by six, a nice big chunk that I froze and I'm taking up to my parents today. So my mother will put that in her freezer. They have a little refrigerator. They don't have a stove, but they have a microwave. And so one day when at assisted living, they don't like the lunch or the dinner um, that's being um, given. You can choose different things, but sometimes they don't, they just don't want what, what they're having. So my mother can plan and take that out and microwave it for them. And they can either eat it there in their kitchen area, they have a small round table, or they can still go to the dining room and eat it there. So anyways, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna bring that to her. And I also gave about the same, maybe even a little, I guess about the same amount to my granddaughter and my daughter. So, and then I froze two long strips of it. And yeah, so I mean, it, it kind of like disappeared rather quickly. And plus I, well, I ate that first day that, then I made it, of course. I Oh my gosh, it was so good. And then I still left another nice piece in the refrigerator for me for during the week. So I ate it a couple times. I actually ate it like three times last week. It was just so good. You know how it is with lasagna that sometimes the leftovers is better. <laughs> But it was just really, 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 really good. And um, so I did that last week. And um, and I had pretty much all the ingredients already. The only thing I had to purchase was uh, mozzarella, shredded mozzarella. And I try to shred my own cheese, but I just went with the easy way on this one. Um, I know that the shredded cheese has some sort of a coating on it. Um, so that's why it's best to shred your own. And I do have a block of mozzarella cheese that looks absolutely fine, but it's a little old. So I'm not sure if I should eat it or not. <laughs> I mean, it looks fine. It looks absolutely fine. It's, I never unwrapped it, so it it's, looks perfect. Um, but anyway, so, so that was good. And, um... And what else? So, oh, and the other day I made um, Helen, who's Moss Cottage here on YouTube, she had given me a recipe for an easy chocolate cake. And oh, I made that and it's so easy. <laughs> I'll be making it again and again. Just so good, so good. I didn't put icing on it. I put um, the powdered sugar on it. It's just, it was just it's just perfect. And um, so I made that all from scratch. And what else did I make? I've just been, oh, so the other thing I've been eating, like I said, I have my lettuce. Now, of course, I don't have tomatoes from my garden yet, but I have some tomatoes from Trader Joe's and uh, the small, uh, like, cherry-type tomatoes. And I get the ones that are all different colors. So, like, when you see tomatoes that are, like, brown in color or yellow in color, try them they're so tasty they're so good i almost prefer the non-red tomato than the red tomato so even in my garden i bought a black variety um, a yellow variety so of course red as well but um so when you see in the store um like uh, last year i bought a package it was all brown um tomatoes oh they're so good um so try to get past the color if that bothers you and give them give them a try but anyway so i in fact i'm still going to bring um so i'm going to bring some lettuce i'm going to cut it 
before I head up to my parents today. And so I'm going to bring my mother some fresh lettuce and I'll bring her some of those little tomatoes and they can have it whenever. So say tomorrow or the next day they ended up eating the lasagna. Well, they can have a salad with it too. I'm going to bring a little salad dressing up. Um, I have to remember that. So yeah, yeah. So I'm going to bring that up. And, um, but during the week last week, I had um, a couple salads, two or three salads. I also put the lettuce on sandwiches. But the salads, like a, a one of them that I made, I had um, chicken, um, chicken breasts that I had cooked and um, I put into the salad. Oh, it's just so good with the fresh lettuce. It's just amazing. But the other thing that I want to do was I've been wanting to make bread from scratch. And, you know, there's so many amazing YouTube videos out there. It just gets... It, it was hindering me from trying because it kind of felt like too much. And it, it just had my head going too many different directions. And I'm like, you know what? Back in the day, things weren't, I, I shouldn't say difficult. And it, I'm back in the day, I'm sure it was probably done the same as it is now. <laughs> but again, just having too much information in one spot wasn't good for me. So I'm like, I'm going to pull out my old recipe book. This recipe book is from 1979. And I'm like, I'm going to use a recipe, a bread recipe from this. And that's all I'm going to look at. This is it. <laughs> this is all I'm going to look at. And there's several bread recipes in here that I do want to make. But what's really cool, you know, yeast breads, it gives just some guidance, some tips on making bread with yeast and how yeast reacts and why you use this. Like you add the flour for this reason and this is how you knead and you cover the dough and let it right. Just like really good information. And then the first bread that I'm going to make, it's called Perfect White Bread. And I happen to have this in my cabinet. I bought this at Trader Joe's, I don't know, a few months ago. And I've this intimidates me. Absolutely, 100% in intimidates me. <laughs> I've never, I don't ever remember cooking with yeast before. Um, so, yeah, and they talk about different ways in here, like there's two, di two different ways that you can use this yeast to make the bread, so I'll figure out which way to do it. And then it didn't seem so hard. I mean, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, even though there's pictures and I've seen videos on how to knead the dough, um, I'm not 100% sure on that. So... But I'll figure it out. I mean, it explains it and it has some pictures. I'll figure that out. But, you know, maybe I maybe what I need to do is now that I'm talking to all of you is, you know, the, the first time I do it, it's going to be a learning experience, right? I mean, so maybe I just need to, to, to just do it. And if it fails, it fails. But at least I'll have learned and hopefully learn what I did wrong. And, but I want, I want something that's super easy that, um, that I can do again and again and again. So that's my goal here is to keep it simple, keep it simple. So I'm going to give this a try, hopefully this week. So next Monday, <laughs> I can give you an update on it, <laughs> but I have three a little bit smaller than what it calls for here. Um, this calls for eight and a half by four and a half by two and a half inch loaf pans. And I have one that size, but I also have three tins that are like an inch smaller than that. And I'm thinking I'm going to bake the bread in those. And, um, and I'm thinking I can just probably, you know, so if, if I make three and they turn out, I'll maybe put two in the freezer right away as soon as it cools, and but we'll have one to eat and that day. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. 
of doing. So, I mean, if you guys have any tips, I'm, I'm really wide open to any tips you can give me. Um, remember, I just want to, I want to keep it as easy as possible. So if you have tips about maybe how the yeast works or something I should look for, I don't know. I don't even know what to ask because I don't know enough about it to, to, to know, right? So, so, but anyways, so I'm going to use this. Um, yeah. So I'm back into, you know, really trying to cook and bake from scratch so that, you know, I can control what is in my food. Now, with that being said, there is no way I will ever be able to only cook from scratch. That's not my goal. But if I can do like two or three different things a week, it's better than not doing it, right? So, so yeah, so little by little, you know, I just kind of want to get back into that. And having the garden is a huge incentive for eating healthier and, um, and making healthier foods, of course, right? Because, I mean, I just walk outside and I have the fresh food. So, well, hopefully I'll have fresh food. Um, yeah, that's my plan anyway. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but definitely the lettuce, the dill, and the parsley, because that I already have. All right, so let's look at my threads. Um, so again, it's purples. Very different. Very different. This is like a lilac. This is more of a maroon color. Um, purple, I have pinks, um, I have this one, no, I mean, this has purple in it, but I, well, I kind of like that, actually, so, it doesn't have to match perfectly, um, these two, I think, are the same, but, you know, while I'm using, doing purple, I might as well use purple, Oops, oops, that just went on the floor. I might as well use purple thread because I have it. Oh gosh, that went way under my desk. That was the lilac co color. Um, I'm trying to get it with my foot. I don't know that I can. Um, well, I guess I'm not using that. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I actually think I'm leaning towards this one at the moment. Let's see. All right. So these are the same. This one is all over the place. So let's get this wound up. Okay. All right. This one's coming apart too. This is gray. Why did I pull gray? Did I mean to pull a different one and I got that one? Oh, because in here it looks lighter or it looks more purple in the bag. Okay. All right, so I have these colors. This one's too pink. So I have the purple, 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 or this one that has different colors. I'm liking this one. I mean, this one is good, but this one might be better if I wanted to keep it more of a, um, a little bit more monochromatic with the deeper purples, that one would be good for that. So I think I'm gonna put this to the side. And I think I'm gonna use this, which really doesn't truly have purple in it, but the colors, so it has like the green, um, it has the pink, it has the beige. So it has colors in it that absolutely match. Now let's see what I got going here. Hear the birds outside? Oh my gosh, I've so much been enjoying the the weather uh, the past week and um, even over the next week, like we're basically not having rain, um, which I mean, I love rain um, and we need rain, but um, I'm really enjoying sitting out on my back deck and reading and um, I update, I have a spreadsheet for my, my garden, 
and I like to sit out there. I sit under my umbrella and just, uh, I don't know, I eat out there. I've just really been enjoying it out there. So, um, so I'm glad to have another week of it. I mean, the nights are cool. They are actually in the 40s at night still. And um, so good sleeping weather. And, oh, it's just been so beautiful out there. So, so, so beautiful. All right, so what I'm going to do before I start sewing, let me see where we're at time-wise. And, all right, I'm at 35 minutes. So instead of rushing through this sewing, we'll come back next week and we'll get this sewn down. And it will be another done, done block. Oh, I just noticed this, a piece of tool. Wouldn't that look pretty on here, too? I'm going to keep that out. <laughs> Maybe we'll add that somehow. Even under the flower, it would be kind of cool. Because it does, the flower itself has some tool under it. So maybe, you know, just to use the stuff up, right? So even having extra tool around it. Oh, I like that. I like that. I don't know that you can see it really well because, well, it's tool. But, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that. Because if I can use that piece, I might as well use it. All right, so I think I'm going to wrap it up for this Monday. And I'll be back again next Monday. And um, if you want to see, you know, videos about my garden, I do have a playlist. I put a video out on Friday, so a few days ago, with an update. I did a vlog style uh, where I was outside for a good, I don't know, three hours just planting seeds. And um, it was a lot of fun to do it like vlog, vlog style. And um, so check it out. Uh, that was my Friday video. And, um, yeah, and you'll see I have 44 containers now with seeds in them. <laughs> That's double last year. <laughs> and I'll probably have a few more by the time I'm done. So, <laughs> uh, but anyways, all right. Thank you all so much for being here. And let me know your thoughts on everything, on the cooking, on the baking, on the sewing. Let me know your, on the gardening. Let me know your thoughts. All right. I love you guys. Have a great one. Bye-bye.